Good morning, everybody. We are just about to get started. Megan, will you come up here with me real quick? We are just about to get started. My name is Amina Brown. I am the chapter host for Creative Mornings. Thank you so much for being here this morning. Uh, we have not started our live stream yet because I want to make sure you have time to silence your phone, okay? Any alarms you have, any strange text noises, oop, that was for me. Uh, make sure you silence. Alrighty, it's time. Good morning, Creative Mornings Atlanta. How are we doing this morning? I need a little bit more. How are we doing this morning? It's Friday, you guys. All right. Good morning, everyone. I'm Megan Gite. I'm a member of the Creative Mornings team here in Atlanta, and I am so excited to welcome you back in person 
but I am dying out of curiosity. Who here is joining this morning for your first time by a show of hands? All right, let's give a round of applause for our newbies. I love it. Welcome, guys. Thank you so much for coming. And hopefully there's a lot of you joining online that it's your first time as well. If that's the case, welcome, welcome. All right, my name's Megan Gite. I'm gonna be doing a couple of morning announcements and thanking some lovely partners and doing introductions. So the first person I wanna thank is our coffee and breakfast partner of this morning, Chrome Yellow. Who enjoyed the coffee and pastries? Heck yes. And those of you online, you're not left out either. So if you go to Chrome Yellow by noon today, tell them that Creative Morning sent you, you get free coffee and a pastry as well. Don't forget to tip your, tip your baristas, and they are located at 501 Edgewood Avenue Southeast, so please check them out. Uh, if you're looking for something to do this weekend, I know it's Friday, it's kind of last minute, but WABE is actually hosting an event this weekend that's called Mixtape Live. It's an excellent opportunity to see up-and-coming and new Atlanta artists as well as celebrate Black Music Month. You can actually get 25% off uh, joining that event. It's hosted this Sunday. The code to get 25% off is CM25. So please check that out. It's gonna be hosted at Monday Night Brewery, which is an awesome space. So please, please go check it out. Next up, I wanted to have a little bit of tidbits. I know we had a good handful of people here. It's your first time joining. A little background on Creative Mornings. I'm assuming that you probably looked up a little bit of what we're about, but just in case you stumbled in off the street and you just got here, Creative Mornings is a free lecture series that actually happens all over the globe. So there's over 220 chapters. Atlanta is just one of them. People come just like you and me, creatives that want to get together, build some community and connections, and hear from some awesome people and things they're doing. So thank you for that. We all have the same theme that we cover each month. So this month's theme is wilderness. We did not plan this mural specifically for the theme, but it is lining up quite nicely for us, right? Um, a couple tidbits that I took off of Wilderness, off the Creative Mornings uh, global page that I thought were really um, sort of helpful as a reminder or nice to hear, is that we do not exist apart or separate from the wild. The wilderness lives within all of us, the rhythms of our bodies tethering us to the natural world. So I'm super excited to be thinking about and focusing on this theme today. We have some awesome guests, which I will get to in a moment. But last up, I want to thank our sponsor, the actual global and local sponsor, um, MailChimp. So MailChimp this year marks actually 13 years, which is insane of them helping support and promote Creative Mornings. So it's thanks to MailChimp that we've been able to grow from a handful of chapters to over 220 globally. So a couple things I want to mention for MailChimp to please go to their website and check out. They have just recently released their 2022 benchmark report, which is where entrepreneurs and uh, oh, I have little freelancers and agencies um, have actually given some insights and facts and things that you can sort of hold yourself accountable to. So go check those out if you're interested, okay? And then lastly I have, and I'm going to switch my method for how I'm doing notes here. I'm going to introduce our first guest. And she has a really lovely bio that explains a lot about her and I didn't want to miss it, so I'm pulling up a new method, okay? So we are joined here by wellness practitioner Ebony Black. Ebony Black's the owner of the Feelings Garden LLC. She's a wellness practitioner focused on mental health by using sound healing, visualization, meditation art, and holistic mental health coaching to assist clients in their process of radical healing by decreasing high levels of stress and anxiety. I don't know about you, but I could use that now and honestly the last couple years, right? She uses sound bowls and the power of intention to create new patterns in relationships and daily life. Ebony has a background in mental health with a master's degree in marriage and family therapy. She has worked with individuals, families, and children as a therapist. And after working in the nonprofit sector, she realized that she wanted to go beyond the therapy room, which led her to get her certification in sound healing. As a sound healing practitioner, Ebony has worked in the early childhood centers, private practices, wellness-centered events, and corporate companies, just to name a few. And we are so lucky to have her with us here today. So with that, I want to give a big round of applause and welcome Ebony Black to Creative Mornings in Atlanta. Thank you. 
great job introducing me. Like, wow, <laughs> I feel good about that. Um, so today I am going to take you through a sound journey. So I hope everybody is ready to get grounded and feel a little lighter this morning. Can can I get a show of hands? Who's just ready to just feel good before starting the day? Okay, me too. Me too. Um, so I'm going to take you through a three-part breathing exercise. And this will be a gentle breathing exercise because I know a lot of us have our masks on. Um, so just be gentle, gentle with your body when we do it. And then you will start to slowly hear the sound bowls wash over you. And in that moment, I just want you to sink into your seat a little bit and relax. I like to ground myself by putting my hand over my heart. So if everybody can put their hand on their heart. And this is so everybody can have a collective intention that this is hard work that we're doing. And we wanna be focused on that specifically. So if you can close your eyes, everybody think about an intention that you wanna hold for the day. My intention will be I am free. I'm gonna pause a bit so you can think. And we're going to do a three-part breathing exercise in through the nose and out through the mouth. So breathing in through the nose. Out. In. Out. In. Out. Now if you're comfortable, you can go ahead and keep your hand over your heart or you can place your hand on your lap, hands down for grounding, face up for receiving. And you will slowly start to hear the sounds of the bowls wash over you. If everyone could gently just start to breathe in and out slowly.
we come back to our bodies in the space. I want to do a breathe part breathing exercise again. Breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. Breathing in and out. Breathing in, out, in, out. Thank you for this time. You can open up your eyes and come back to the space. Smile at someone, wink at them. Just acknowledge them. <laughs> and I hope this helped you to feel a little calm today and recharged. Thank you. Oh my goodness, wasn't that a wonderful way to start your Friday morning, y'all? Give it up one more time for Ebony Black. Oh, we could all use a little more breath in our lives right now. My name is Amina Brown. I am the chapter host for Creative Mornings Atlanta. Thank you so much for coming this morning. Also, I am just wanting to let you know that obviously I don't do this by myself. There are a lot of badass people that help put this event on. And I wanna give a special shout out, first of all, to Vanna Black, who is a member of our team that designed the gorgeous poster that the first 25 of you were able to get today. Does anybody have that poster? You can show it to me right now. Anybody, a couple of you got them. Yeah, so shout out to Vanna Black for designing that. Thank you, Vanna. And a few of our team members are here. All of the social media, newsletter, graphic design, everything you see here is done by a badass team of volunteers. So all my monthly team members, will you raise your hands for me just so people can see who you are? Give them a hand because they help do this every month, yes. Thank you to them. We want to do a big thank you for Ebony Black. You want to make sure you follow Ebony's work at The Feelings Garden. You too could have your own personal sound bath facilitation for a fee. Mm -hmm. Yes, we love to see that. All right. Also, what else am I trying to tell you? We also could not do this without our local partners. I want to give a special shout out to Gene Kansas Commercial Real Estate. And you are looking right now at Constellations, which is one of the amazing things in the city. Many, many things that Gene Kansas has been a part of. So you too can be a part of the work that Gene Kansas is doing. So you want to make sure you check out some information about Constellations. And if you want to know more about these amazing purpose-driven spaces that Gene Kansas is building and collaborating across the city, you want to make sure you check out genekansas.com. We want to give a big thank you to Moda Museum of Design Atlanta hosting us today. Thank you, Moda. And we actually were connected to Moda because of the team at Gene Kansas. So listen here, you know, this is a place where you can come and be inspired. You can um, host your, your birthday party here. If you have a corporate team and you're looking for a creative place to maybe host your team for some team building stuff, you can do that here too. And the team at Gene Kansas can help you, okay? So you wanna get in touch with Brooke at GeneKansas.com. That's B-R-O-O-K. E at genekansas.com, you could receive 15% off of your room rental. Do it today. Do it today. Okay. Also, I want to thank off the record all of this uh, professional lighting and everything you see up here. This crispy live stream that we have looks good because of the team at Off the Record. Off the Record is a content creation and storytelling studio in Atlanta, Georgia, making space for disruptors, innovators, artists, and creatives who give a damn. Listen, you too can collaborate with Off the Record for a fee. Okay, <laughs> make sure you visit offtherecord.com. That is O-F-F-T-H-A, 
R-E-C-O-R-D. Yes, off the record. Make sure you check that out. Okay, now let me tell y'all, we have a little special announcement right here. So those of you that have been following us, you know that we had an environment that we did called the field trip, right? Some of you may have attended this before. And our field trip was a space where you could be experiential. You could be hands-on. Well, we have rebranded this event. It is now called Creative After Hours. Doesn't it sound creatively sexy? Don't you want to be there? You want to be a part of it. Not that kind of sexy, but the sexy that's cool. Okay? Then everyone's going to be clothed, but I'm telling you, it's going to be a very cool environment. You want to be a part of this. Our next creative after hours event is going to take place July 28th. That is the last Thursday of July. Let me remind you, this year we are alternating. So those of you who are my OG attendees, you remember that we were having creative mornings every month, right? We are technically still doing that, but we're alternating mornings and evenings this year. So anytime you come here for a morning, that means the following month there'll be an evening event. Because we have some folks in our creative community that can't get up this early or have other work commitments. So we wanna have an evening environment where you can be hands on. When you're here in the morning, you get to be inspired, you get to hear a keynote, you get to hear an artist perform. When you go to Creative After Hours, you get to perform maybe. You get to paint or dance or do breath work, all sorts of things. So we can't wait to explore the theme of spirituality with you next month. Okay, now for our future presentation. We are excited to welcome our keynote speaker. Our speaker this month is the founding executive director of Flux Projects. How many of you are familiar with Flux in the city? Some of you, yes. Flux Projects is an organization commissioning public art that invites audiences in Atlanta to explore the city's sites and stories as a means to imagining its future possibilities. Since 2010, Flux Projects has presented over 130 projects, engaged over 700 artists, artists and reach an audience of over 500,000 people. We are so excited to have executive, founding executive director, Ann Archer Dennington as our speaker on Wilderness this month. Give it up for Ann. work. Uh, thank you for that warm welcome. Um, and Ebony, thank you. I think y'all are going to get the very <laughs> relaxed version of this presentation now. But it, it is really a pleasure to, it's a pleasure to be here. And I do want to acknowledge that with the work that Flux Projects does, we do this on the ancestral lands of the Muscogee Creek people. And then in the time that I spend with you today, I hope to um, share with you how our work began by engaging the streets and the built environment of Atlanta. And while not uh, abandoning these spaces, it has moved increasingly to become about the land beneath it. And hopefully at the end, we'll also show you some places where even though the natural world is prevalent in Atlanta, we feel like the wilderness is still showing its um, colors. So as we began, um, Flux started really from a love of Atlanta and this belief that our creative community was amazing. It was just underfunded and underrecognized. So we had a desire to make art more visible, to put artists in front of people in order to make um, them more visible and uh, hopefully more funded. And um, all of this, oh, we keep going. And in order to grow sport for the arts, because as the arts grow, our city becomes more interesting, compassionate, and more capable of facing the challenges of the future. And I want to acknowledge that um, our response to this was to create temporary art projects in public spaces that were part of daily lives. And this was inspired by the uh, energy of the city. So from our early works, some of you may remember um, Flux Night that was in um, Castleberry. And this um, put projections, performances, sound and light installations, parades, and other audience engagements, and it filled the streets of this neighborhood in Southwest Atlanta. Um, 
projects like John Morse's Roadside Haiku, which shared through haiku poems these small bits of life's wisdoms throughout the streets of Atlanta. Um, Nick Cave, who um, was in the historic landmark that we now call Pont City Market. And he worked with our local curator, I mean choreographer T. Lang, and 33 local performers, and he created this mesmerizing performance. And in it, it became, in the, in the second part, a call to arms for African-American males. He adorned them with these sound suits so that they could become warriors in their own destiny. Um, we've also gone to some pretty um, surprising places. If you were with us last fall, you know that Bandaloop uh, graced the facade of the 725 Ponce building. And if you walk out of Ponce City Market and you look across the Beltline, this is that huge building that was built by Jim Irwin. And with a project called Field, um, they put a cast of seven vertical dancers, a musician, a spoken word artist, and um, also members of Atlanta's Immerse ATL. And feel the project that they did explored the dual power of cloth. So both the human and environmental cost of the textile industry, while also acknowledging the power of cloth to hold comfort and adorn us. And our current project, which is a project called Rail Talk Reconnect by two Dutch designers, Balka um, Bruins and Walter Corvers. It's found in seven MARTA stations across Atlanta. And it's incredibly simple. It invites people to share messages with fellow riders, very simple, magnetic letters on boards. And the simplicity of this has made this project so uh, accessible. And literally, as soon as we set it up, people were engaging with it and sharing messages. But the more you get to know a city, the more you realize that it is determined by the land beneath it. And you've probably heard that Atlanta is considered a city in a forest. So from, its, from our early days, parks have also offered us wonderful places to engage the public. John Q created a series of discursive monuments to the LGBTQ community's contributions to Midtown. And in Piedmont Park, they commemorated um, the softball leagues as a way of connecting lesbians during the 1960s. Zoetic Dance Ensemble use the uh, Fountain of Rings in Centennial Olympic Park to talk about our relationship with water and the importance of conserving our natural resources. Um, and this is a project by Four Freedoms. It's the first art super PAC. They were created in 19, I mean, in, sorry, in 2016 uh, to try to create um, art-based discourse, but also to encourage engagement in the 2016 uh, presidential election. They took as their inspiration FDR's um, belief that there were four uh, rights that were important, four freedoms important for civil society, and those were the freedom of speech, the freedom to worship, um, the freedom from fear, and the freedom from want. And it invited people at events like um, farmers markets and other places to answer this question, freedom for or freedom from, to, as a way of sharing what was important to them and what encouraged them to vote. But it was really with, um, it was really with uh, Grant Park, <laughs> Flux Grant Park, which took our one night event and spread it over four days, that we began to lean in and develop a more deeper, a deeper relationship with what I talk about as the land beneath the city. This project was done on the 135th anniversary of Grant Park, and we worked closely with the Grant Park Conservancy to determine what was important to them, what stories did they want to tell about the park. And they wanted us to share the history of the park, the importance of the park's ecosystem, and its disappear or disappeared um, streams. So, the first project, um, there was a group called Unexpected Collective, 
And they did a series of performances that created these projects over the course of the day, and they really leaned into the history of the park. Uh, the slide you saw previously was embedded in light post were sounds that, that were taken that would have been present in the year the park was founded. Um, but they really leaned into the park as one of the first sites of electricity in the city. And a lot of their projects had glowing balls. So this is one that lit up 300 balloons, lit up a hill. Later in the evening, they slowly turned off one by one until they were down to one. And then they slowly turned on again. This is another one that featured the globe. Um, they, people were invited to make these glowing balls all day, and they slowly uh, filled a field that, glue that it glowed that evening. Laurie Stallings and Glow mapped the approximately 60 acres of the park that was not closed to construction. And I should add that we, um, we invited four artists, and the intent was always to have five. And somehow, we just never identified the fifth artist that became part of this group of women. It was all, all, the, all the teams were led by um, women Atlanta artists. And what we came to realize over time is the park was the fifth artist. And we'd never had a space carry so much presence um, within our work. Um, but these women, activated about 60 acres and 21 locations over four days. And I think that it forever changed, I know, how I saw Grant Park. Um, so if you go back a little bit, and go back a little bit more, because I want to share with you, this is Rachel Garcho's, go back one more who works with um, cast porcelain, and she built a labyrinth. Um, it forced people to have a more intimate interaction with the people who they, with whom they were sharing the park. And you were invited as you walked to pick up stones. And these stones um, were meant to meditate with, and you carried something into the labyrinth, you put the stone down, and you could take another stone out with you. But she also, if you keep going, created these little mens. And so she looked at the historic structures in the park and where something needed to be repaired. And she offered her project and her art as a way of filling in these spaces. But the fourth artist, if you progress a little bit, was Amon Persons. And she traced the lost waterways of the park. Grant Park was once home to five natural springs. Uh, the one remaining evidence of this that we have, if you know Grant Park, is that there's a pond within it. And then if you were following our work this past summer, you know that on Juneteenth, 2020, we opened Remembrance as Resistance, Preserving Black Narratives in Oakland Cemetery. And this was a three-year endeavor with Charmaine Minifield. And it honored the over 800 gra unmarked graves in the African-American burial grounds. Um, the cemetery had used ground-penetrating radar and been able to locate these graves. And we, the project coincided with the completion of the restoration of the African-American grounds. And what you're seeing um, is the replica of a praise house. And praise houses were small wooden structures that were used by enslaved people in the American South as places of worship, because they were only allowed to gather for worship. And inside, you would have found um, a immersive uh, video collage, so you were by that. And then there was an original soundtrack that uh, emanated from the inside out over the burial grounds. And while um, the parks were incredibly important in our work, and Atlanta is known as a city in a forest, it is also, we have found, a city on many creeks. So when I looked this up and I first saw this, I just blew my mind because I knew that Atlanta had creeks. I had found that we had some rivers. 
but I was not prepared for this. We have 3,412 rivers and streams in our region. If you keep going, you'll see that we have 10 sub watersheds, but the creeks in Atlanta go to three primary rivers, and that's the Chattahoochee, the Flint, and the South Rivers. And we started down this path um, from working with an artist named Jonathan Keats, who brought to us a project called Atlanta River Time, with the intent primarily of engaging the Chattahoochee and his desire in working with rivers around the world is to try to return people to rivers as natural timekeepers. So he says that our dependence upon sort of the universal time, the time we all know that's shown on our watches and our clocks, has been about trying to conquer nature and put in man's time. And he wants to rem us to remember that nature has its own pace. So we began exploring the places uh, in our city where these creeks still exist. And I think if you look, you'll see the first one is the South Fourth of Pe Fork of Peachtree Creek. It's, in, um, it's under I-85 in Buckhead. If you know where Tower Liquor is, it's sort of behind that. The second image that you see is Proctor Creek over in the Bankhead area. And the third one is in Morningside. It's the South Fork of Peachtree Creek. And I want to acknowledge that Flux Projects is really dependent in all of this on the research and the work that has been done by so many people. So Sherwood Design Engineers, you have um, Chattahoochee Now, the South, Waterway, uh, South River Waterway Alliance, you have Finding the Flint, you have River Keepers, um, so many people who have been so generous with what they have done and the work that they've done in this city. And what evolved out of our, what we thought was gonna be one project with Jonathan Keats is a series that we've titled Flow. And it's become a multi-year um, initiative in which we will explore Atlanta's relationship with water. It's history with water, how it's formed our city and the potential for the future. And projects will look at um, conservation, equity, urban design, and we're going to launch this with um, an Atlanta artist named Rachel Parrish. And she has a project called Emergence. And if you look at the screen and you see the sort of brighter green dots, there are four creek beds that lie under downtown Atlanta. And she is gonna create a series of monuments to mark these. And this will be the first. Um, we are working uh, still um, confirming artists to this, and we will do this uh, later in the coming months. Hopefully by September we'll make a formal announcement of all of them, but we invite you to come along as we do this. It's certainly been for us a rediscovery of what we see as glimpses of the wilderness that was what Atlanta once was, and we hope that you will join us. You can follow us at fluxprojects.org. Rebecca is here to sign you up. And again, I just want to thank you all for allowing me to spend time with you today. Thank you so much, Ann. We're going to take some questions. For my people that are here uh, in the room, we're gonna take some questions. And for my people who are virtual, make sure you put your questions in the chat and I will try to ask them of Anne. Does anyone have any questions? Yes. I'm just curious if the monuments remain for the four underground creek beds mm -hmm. permanent, because it seems like most of what you do is to preserve the temporary. They will, I'll, I'll repeat that question oh, okay. so our virtual folks can hear it. So will the monuments be permanent that are the monuments of the creeks and waterbeds? Um, they will be temporary. They will, we will launch it during the city of Atlanta's Elevate Festival and they will be um, actually sound projects uh, accompanied by sculptural works and um, video projections depending upon the built space. We are speaking to a developer in one of these areas about the potential of putting in a longer term project. I doubt we're talking permanent, but something that will last will be less ephemeral. But I think it would be amazing if Atlanta did something or if something emerged that did note this. You all may know that the, um, I don't know if you, if, 
it was actually the flooding of Entrenchment Creek and caused by some of the paving over that we've done that flooded the neighborhoods in Southwest Atlanta, English Avenue, and Vine City. Mm. So, I mean, we, we may not see these creeks, but they make themselves known. Mm. Mm -hmm. Follow-up question? Yeah, I just want to add, because every geology student knows about these creek beds, mm -hmm. um, the Spring Street Road Cut uh, is always weeping when you go by. Um, the Spring you know Street what I'm talking about? There's a parking garage on top of it. It's kind of across from the Center for Puppetry Arts, I think. So oh. it, that, that, it's amazing, but it's still running. The spring is still running. Oh, thank you for that. We got a tip here for another place that <laughs> could need a monument. Thank you. We have a follow-up question, and I, I, I'm repeating your question so that our folks, our folks virtually also can make sure they hear, so thank you. Yes? Thank you for being here. So mine is more of a comment. Mm -hmm. um, it was an amazing comment. So when you did um, Vandaloo, I think that was last year, like I started crying. And I feel like a lot of other people did as well because it was on the belt line, it was beautiful, and there was just so many things wrapped all into one. There were things, there was dancing, there were tributes, there was singing, and we were just like, oh my God, we're outside. People are suspended from buildings. Like it was just so beautiful. I also visited the um, the piece that was in Grand Park as well. It was very moving. So thank you for what you do. Anybody thank that you. says art is not transformative is a liar. So. <laughs> uh, I, more <laughs> encouraging words for Flux. Thank and you. And will you, uh, since our virtual folks weren't able to hear these wonderful words, will you share a little bit about the project that was reflected on there? Yeah, so she's talking about the project with Bandaloop, which is the one that w had the vertical dancers. And I think that... Um, yeah, you were not alone in crying at that piece. Um, I, I, it's their work. I mean, let's be honest, they're amazing. And it's not only that they dance on the side of buildings, it is how intentional they are and how much love they give with their performances. Um, how much deep, rich meaning they put in there and um, people take it as their, you know, as it comes. But I think it was also timing. Um, it was, October of you know 2021, people were coming back out. We had been apart from each other for so long. And there was something about sharing a space with something that was so celebratory, right? And you had time and you were in this place, the belt line. And I think that, I don't know, sometimes things come together like just perfectly. Because literally a month before, they were like, the way this is going, we might be shuttered again. So thank you for that. I mean, we when we do our work in public spaces, I should have added, it's always free. It's open to the public. And we don't really know who's there. So I mean, we do the people that we know. But there are so many peer, people there that we don't recognize. So anytime you can share something with us like that by email, it means more than you know. And I share it with our board and our supporters. And um, thank you. That's wonderful. I have a question virtually, mm -hmm. and then I've got an in-person question okay. over here. Uh, one of our virtual attendees is asking, what neighborhoods do you think have prime opportunities for new art installations? Wow, there are so many. Um, there are a lot. I think that there we are looking um, over by the Bankhead Marta Station in the Proctor Creek area. It's one of the places that you saw, and we're um, and talking to an artist that's been working with the neighborhoods in that area for so long. Um, you know, I think I've had people remind me that Buckhead always gets overlooked when it comes to public art. Um, our work really starts from the location, and so a lot of it is when there is an artist that really wants to do something and it the site just sort of expresses itself. I mean, we've definitely worked a lot in in-town neighborhoods, the Old Fourth Ward has been kind of a, 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 I don't know, a fulcrum or whatever you call it. It's been a center around which we have migrated for a long time. Um, we've had people ask us to please do something in Adair Park. We love what's happening on the West End. This will be, this. Um, the project with MARTA is there and it's our second project over there. That's wonderful, I had a question over here. I but think. if you have a neighborhood, email me. Yes. I have a question over here that I missed. Yes. Hi. Um, thank you so much for being with us. What is your um, process, your recruitment process for artists? 
Question is, yeah. what is the process for artist recruitment? Do the artists reach out to Flux, or does Flux reach out to the artist? It, it's a little bit of both. We, in our early years, we did a lot of calls for proposals. That's kind of how we started. That's how we filled most of our first two years. And I think what it really um, made us aware of was um, how big the vision was for the artists that worked here, and the gap between their vision and what they were able to accomplish was really about funding and support, and so we, we stepped into that. Um, over time, we have done more inviting artists to um, create work for us, um, and sometimes that's for something that's immediate, and sometimes it's an ongoing, you know, but we also are always open to uh, seeing proposals, and you can email us, I mean, my email is ann at fluxprojects.org, but you, the, on our website, there's also a way to submit, and all we really ask to see is sort of 250 words about an idea, and so when we are asking for calls for proposals, we really call them calls for concepts, and we just want to know your name, your, your, how to get in touch with you, um, your website, and just your idea. So we don't look for budgets or anything like that. We became acutely aware of how much work artists have to do to submit a proposal. And we're really mostly often just looking for how you would approach a space. So sometimes the project that comes out of that is very different. So Charmaine Minifield's project in Oakland Cemetery was pitched to us for Grant Park, actually. And when we got the proposal, it was just so obvious that it didn't need to be in Grant Park. So we said, let's do it a year later, let's do it in Oakland Cemetery. And then because of the pandemic, it ended up being this three-year engagement with, with Oakland Cemetery in that space. Other questions? Uh, yeah. How much research, like, before you actually release a project goes into each project, would you say? Question is, how much research goes into each mm -hmm. Flux project? So, um, I would say a lot. Sometimes the artist comes to us with most of their research done. And we are just coming in and working on the production side of it. Um, Jonathan Keats has, is so involved with organizations around um, the natural world, but I think that we definitely entered into this exploration together. So it really just depends. Sometimes we're saying, hey artists, look at this space and we, th we love this and we think it's important. Um, we did a project at Pond City Market, and that was one where we were really drawn to the space. If you know the history of the space, it has been so many things, from the Sears and Roebuck Distribution Center to City Hall East. It has this really interesting history in the art world where it was um, Atlanta City Gallery East. It was where, um, for many years, it held the Art Papers art, art Auction, and during the Olympics, Souls Grown Deep. Um, had their exhibition there. Um, the great-granddaughter of the president of Sears and Roebuck was Lucinda Bonin, who is considered the grandmother of the arts in Atlanta. So it would just, I don't know, and it is this location that throughout the development of Atlanta has had this role in um, leisure. Rest, relaxation, often involved in the rejuvenation of the city, um, and so we, we look for sites like that, and then it's often asking artists to come in and explore them with us. I can take one more question. Yeah. You mentioned Pond City Market mm -hmm. and the Grant Park. You know, we've done it at all these, we've done projects at these public places. I'm curious if you get a lot of pushback from these places that you approach, or are they generally like, willing to work with you and do they like, have a desire to do these projects? Question is uh, regarding locations like Pond City Market or other places. Do you ever get pushback from those locations about the installations? We have been incredibly lucky, and we have been embraced by property owners, neighborhood associations, um, the City of Atlanta, Parks Department, again and again and again. And um, I think that there's a lot of trust 
um, between us. And I have to say the city has been an amazing partner in doing all that we do. But yeah, every time we do a project, it is engaging multiple partners and it requires multiple partners to say yes and really to take the leap of faith. Um, and we would not be here if they didn't. And thank you so much. Give oh, it up for you. Ann Archer Dennington. If you have more questions about Flux uh, and you are here in person, there is actually a table as you are walking out that will have more information. And let me tell you something. It's some pins, some Flux <laughs> Project pins available, honey. I know you want free stuff. And you can represent for Flux too. Okay, go to the table. You're going to talk to Rebecca and the Flux team there. Uh, you can get any questions answered. And for my virtual people, make sure you visit the Flux Project's website. We put those links up there for you. And thank you so much. Thank you all for joining us. We will see you next month, last Thursday of the month, for Creative After Hours. Have a great weekend. Woo!